Time wasting has always been a fine art, from cleverly delaying throw ins to kicking the ball away for no reason. Running down the clock gets results. I'll hold my hands up. I've turned around before and made substitutions in the 80th minute. Not for any reason to but to make the substitution. I certainly don't want that player running off if I'm 1 0 up. If we went in with a couple of minutes to go, the ball would probably kicked out the stand or it'd be thrown in the back of the... I don't know, it, it, anything to, to get us to win the game. Again, wasting time by not playing that ball out of the area. The referee is going to produce another card. Our team's time waster could come from Uruguay. With a player sent off at the start of their 1986 World Cup match against Scotland, their players resorted to every time-wasting tactic in the book. The poor Scots never stood a chance. Well, they were a disgrace to world football. I think they're the scum of world football. Uh, we have never encountered anything like that before. He used every tactic going, you know, to run the clock down from, from early on after the man got sent off. And, I mean, it was despicable, really. Our rule breaker could also be an Italian. The Azzurri never missed an opportunity to pass the ball back to their keeper to waste away those crucial minutes. I remember Dino's off, the Italian keeper. Someone said, I think John Motson said it was like the 39 steps because he would hold the ball and wander around his penalty area forever and then he'd pass it out to a defender and then the defender would pass it back to us off and you start all over again. But we're not picking an Italian. The back pass has now been outlawed and players have discovered cleverer ways to waste time. One of the players would get the nod and uh, he'd go down injuries if he'd, if he'd been shot and he'd die, you know, horizontal on the turf as if he'd been shot and then the, the, the physio would come on for a couple of minutes, you know, treat him, make sure he's all right, he'll get up, he'll limp for a couple of, couple of seconds and then get on with the game. But it, what it done, it, it killed the game. But no laws could possibly legislate for the actions of our prime suspect. Ilunga Mwepu was playing for Zaire against Brazil in the 1974 World Cup. Great consultation going on, not quite what they're going to do with it. It's one of the funniest things I've ever seen in my life in football. Brazil have got the free kick. And the wall's all lined up. And then a guy just sprinted from the wall and humped the ball up the park. Now that's a booking. That must be a booking by Mwepu. Uh, to, I mean, everybody looked, the, the players on both sides, referee, everybody's looking and saying, what's, what's got into him, you know? For the craziest time waste of all time on the biggest stage of all, Ilunga Mwepu from Zaire gets our number two shirt. <laughs> Wasting time to win is one way of breaking the rules. Trying not to win on purpose takes our rule breakers team to new heights of cynicism. It's the 1982 World Cup in Spain with West Germany playing Austria. After 10 minutes, the score is 1-0 to the Germans. Germany got a 1-0, got into a 1-0 lead. That suited them, that meant they were through. But it also meant that if the score stayed like that, Austria were through. Before kickoff, the teams knew the other results in the group. A 1-0 to West Germany would see them both through. Once the Germans scored, the match became a total farce. Well, it really is sort of Viennese waltz time, the tempo that the teams are dancing to at the moment. We're watching it, observing this, and we couldn't believe it. We couldn't believe that this game was going on. Both sides stayed in their own half of the field, and it was, it was like a tennis match. It was a total disgrace, and actually, both those countries should at that time have been thrown out of the World Cup. The result led FIFA to change the rules. Qualifying games had to be played simultaneously in a doomed attempt to prevent stitch-ups. It didn't work. In Italia 90, during a match between Holland and Ireland, the crowd heard the score in another qualifying match and shouted it out to both teams. We needed to draw, and, and Holland needed to draw, and we were drawn one each in about five or ten minutes of the game with a goal. And somehow they got to know on the field the result of the England game against Egypt. The referee had to tell both captains to play properly, but the teams on the pitch had come to an understanding not to score. 
if they agreed something, fine. I didn't even question it. But who should pop up as late substitute for Ireland? None other than our rule breaker, Tony Cascarino. But he didn't know about the no scoring plan. He didn't know anything about it. And he was still trying to score a goal. And everybody was yelling at him. <laughs> well, all I could see from Jack was from the bench was his big red face shouting and screaming at me uh, with his finger pointing at me to tell me to literally calm down. You know, we're both there, you know. And I was, I actually, when we went back to the dressing room and after, and he went, you silly big idiot, what, what were you doing? But nothing could compare to the player who makes our rule breakers team. He was involved in a Tiger Cup match in Asia between Thailand and Indonesia. The winner had to play Vietnam, the strongest team in the competition. Both teams really didn't want to play Vietnam, so they wanted to lose the game, so they would have ended up playing, uh, staying in Hanoi and not going up to Ho Chi Minh City. Determined to try to lose, the Indonesian goalkeeper makes a daring midfield run. This goalkeeper was going out of his goal just to allow, leave his goal empty and hope that maybe Thailand or one of his players knocked the ball in the back of the net. But the crowning moment had yet to come. It was 2-2 and only a few minutes were left. Indonesia's Akadono in white was supposed to be defending his goal. Uh oh we might have an own goal situation here. How about that? I think they're looking at it. When you're watching the sort of final goal, as it were, you're thinking to yourself, the guy must be miles offside because he's sort of in a position and then you suddenly realize that he scored an own goal they were heavily punished because of it and it looked like they were going to get thrown out of fifa at one stage but uh, luckily enough for thailand and luckily enough for the indonesia they were just fined heavily and both coaches and both managers i think were suspended but far from being shamefaced about it he actually applauds himself for not wanting to win Fixing the game and scoring the ultimate own goal, our place and a round of applause goes to Yusuf Ekadono. Next, our team needs an Oscar-winning performer. We're down to the last three players in our Rule Breakers 11. Next, we need to choose a man who'll do absolutely anything to attract the referee's attention. The bigger the stage, the better the performance. The one thing that annoys me and annoys me intensely is, is people trying to get players sent off. Get Chef running down the uh, blind alley. <laughs> Hello. If Pebo reacts in it. You see, that's, that's just cheating. Cheating. One thing I can't stand in the game is cheating. Don't cheat. That was good referee. And Fuller swearing that he was pushed down or knocked down. If players, you know, start rolling around, and they're seeing a player gets, you know, booked or sent off, and once the player's walking off, then, the, then they jump up, you know, and the next minute they're making a 90-yard sprint. You know, that, that's the biggest wind-up for every professional footballer thing that's out there. I was always told that if a player goes down and rolls all over the place, there's not too much wrong with him, and he's probably trying it on. I mean, you're looking for the theatricals, really, aren't you? And it does happen. Everybody wants the decision to go in their favour. The man who walks into our team's left-back position is the maverick Croatian Slavan Bilic. His place is assured with his notorious acting performances in the 1998 World Cup semi-final between Croatia and France. If I'd have been commentating, I would have been in a rage. I would have torn up my seat. I'd have, I'd have blathered. I'd have foamed at the mouth. For Laurent Blanc, it was... Uh, uh... I mean, you feel really, you feel for him. You say, this is uh, not fair. France were 2-1 up. They had a free kick on the edge of the box. French captain Laurent Blanc was being marked by Billich. He's gone down inside the penalty area. It's Laurent Blanc who's being called to the referee in actual fact. When I felt my shirt being pulled, as I set off on a near post run, I tried to push the player who'd done it out of my way, without really knowing who it was. According to Blanc, he was being shirt pulled. He reacted, and suddenly Bilic went down. Well, he certainly touched, smashed him across the face, or stroked him across the face with his left hand. It's an open hand at the, at the lower part of Bilic's chin, and he's gone for his forehead. But it is... okay.